Welcome to Faith on Film, the show where Christianity and awesome movies intersect, hopefully nourishing your faith life during this COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Shane Pettit and I'll be your host. This week I will be bringing you another awesome film. Uh, this will actually be our first musical on Faith on Film. It's week two and we've got a musical. I have a little secret. I don't love musicals, but I do love this musical. Les Mis is a spectacular film. Les Miserables was released in 2012 and it features an incredible cast. We've got Hugh Jackman, Anne Hathaway, Amanda Seyfried, Russell Crowe, Eddie Redmayne, Helena Bonham Carter, Sasha Baron Cohen, and I'm sure plenty of others um, as well. The film is based on the musical of the same name, which itself is based on a novel by Victor Hugo, written in 1862. The story begins with Jean Valjean, a convict, about to be released from captivity for stealing a loaf of bread 19 years before. He leaves captivity and tries to start a new life, but everywhere he goes, he can't find a new job. As a former criminal, no one wants anything to do with him, and so he becomes very desperate. Luckily, he is taken in and sheltered by a bishop. But Valjean then steals the bishop's silverware in the night and takes off. He's captured by police and brought back to confront the man he stole from. Rather than getting angry, the bishop tells the police that the silverware was a gift. He forgives Valjean in a tremendous act of grace and asks him to use the silver to become an honest man. Here lies the very heart of the film. Jean Valjean is absolutely transformed by this act of mercy. This is his spiritual conversion, his repentance. And the word repent actually means to have a transformative change of heart. And that is absolutely what happens to him. Valjean, because of this mercy, goes on to act with mercy throughout the remainder of the film. For me, this emphasis on mercy shows that this really is a Catholic story. And it is interesting to further examine this Catholic background. The original book was written about a time that was really difficult for the Catholic Church. During the French Revolution, the Church really went to ground. Unfortunately, it had been part of what was an unjust system, and a lot of people were really angry about it. There was a real desire to get rid of the old ways. Let's get rid of the Catholic Church. Let's get rid of the royal family. And the religious population dropped by something like 80%. Priests and nuns were targeted for, for attacks, they were thrown in prison. Once things had calmed down a bit and the church was able to re-establish itself, some really interesting things started to happen. There was a lot of suffering and a lot of poverty um, at this time. And so it was absolutely the time for the church to go out and do as Christ did and, and be with the poor. But it wasn't so much the church as an establishment or, or the priests really driving this. It actually came from the laity, from the ordinary people. One such ordinary young man was Frederick Osnum, a university student and a Catholic. He was heckled by fellow students for his beliefs. He was desperate to prove the worth of his faith in this secular society. And it was the poor in Paris who gave him that opportunity. Frederick and his friends started visiting the poor, bringing them food and conversation. This became a very popular movement and soon became known as the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. In Australia, we know it as Vinnie's. I'm always struck when I watch Les Mis, how much the central character Jean Valjean reminds me of a Frederick Osnum figure, someone who brings God's love to the world. Another important character is Fontaine, a factory worker who struggles to support her illegitimate daughter. She tries to keep her daughter a secret to avoid scandal, but when her boss finds out, he throws her on the street. Osnum advocated very hard for the rights of workers, who in those days did not have many rights at all. Unfortunately, many of the things he fought for were not realised in his time. But it is thanks to people like him that we enjoy things like paid holidays, uh, sick leave, and unfair dismissal laws. In fact, it was later in the same century as Osinum that Pope Leo XIII wrote his famous encyclical, Rerum Novarum, from which the Catholic social teaching principles were born. These principles promote the dignity of all people and the common good of society. Osinum is sometimes referred to as the father of Catholic social teaching. It definitely seems like he and Victor Hugo were very much on the same page. <laughs> Unfortunately, 
Fontaine becomes very ill, but before she dies, Jean Valjean promises to take care of her daughter, Corsette. Years pass, and Corsette grows up to be a really great woman. However, Valjean can't shake his past. Throughout the story, Valjean is hunted by a lawman, Javert, who thinks that Valjean is no good. At every turn, every important moment in Valjean's life, Javert is there, trying to thwart him. Javert is captured by revolutionaries, and is going to be killed. But Valjean steps in, and saves his life. It is this act of mercy that really breaks Javert. When he finally has the opportunity to shoot Valjean, he doesn't do it. Valjean's mercy has inspired compassion in Javert, a man who represents the cold heart of the law in France at the time. In the end, as Valjean is dying, he is visited by two heavenly ghosts. One is Fontaine, the mother of the daughter who he adopted, and the bishop who gave him the silver. It shows us that God indeed has been at work in the story, and it reassures Valjean that he has lived a life as a good and honest man. Victor Hugo didn't think much of the church establishment in his time, but he obviously thought that the Catholic faith had a lot to offer. And he shows this through Valjean and through the actions of other characters who work to support others. A bunch of other stuff happens in the story. There's love, plots, attempted revolution, a whole bunch of other stuff. But that's it from me today. I hope you enjoy watching the film. And I would love to hear your comments too. Les Mis is currently streaming on Amazon Prime, or you can rent it from Google Play, iTunes, or a few other locations. Before I finish up, this COVID-19 pandemic is difficult for us all. And some families and individuals are doing it especially tough. The St. Vincent de Paul Society is out there doing their best in what is some really challenging circumstances. So if you can spare some money, consider donating to Vinnie's to help support your fellow Australians during this crisis. Thank you for watching Faith on Film. See you next time.